Today we're going to take what we did over the last two weeks and put them together. So that means we're going to talk about quadratic formula and we're going to talk, talk about uh, factoring cubes. And we're going to use this to solve higher order polynomials. So the question says, how can we use factoring techniques to solve higher order polynomials? Well, for all cubic polynomials, the degree is 3. And the thing about degree is it determines how many solutions we're going to have. So if our degree is 3, we will have 3 solutions. And here's how we solve a polynomial of a third degree. The step one is that we factor. So we're going to take x cubed minus 27 equals 0. And we're going to factor it. And I don't have much room, but we're going to do our little parentheses and our big parentheses. And the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 27 is 3. And then this is going to be x cubed divided by x. We had three x's. We took out one. We've got two. Over here, it's going to be 27 divided by 3 is 9. And then we're going to take x times 3 to get the 3x for the middle term. And then we put in our signs. That's the soap part. Same sign. Opposite signs. Always positive. Once we do that, then step two says set each factor equal to zero and solve. And you have to use the quadratic formula on the trinomial. And the thing is, I don't have enough space on this page, so I'm going to break it up into another page. But we're going to take x minus 3 and set it equal to zero. We're going to take x squared plus 3x plus 9 and set it equal to zero. So this left equation, we add 3 to both sides, and we get x equals 3. There's one of the three solutions. Over here on this next one, the x squared plus 3x plus 9, I'm going to flip over to the next page and solve that with the quadratic formula, but the quadratic formula is on this page. But x squared plus 3x plus 9 equals 0. We're going to use our quadratic formula. So that means that a is 1, b is 3, c is 9. And we're going to fill those values into the quadratic formula. So it's going to be x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. Well, remember what we did, and I don't have that option here on the screen, but we typed in what's underneath the square root um, into our calculators. So you can type that into your calculator while I'm writing here, but we end up with negative 3 plus or minus when we type this in, we get the square root of negative 27 divided by 2. Well, we're looking for two more answers, and the fact that we've got a plus or minus, that's going to get our two more answers. But in order to come up with those final two answers, we need to go back and we need to simplify the square root of negative 27. And when we do that, remember it's going to be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 27. And the square root of negative 1, remember muscle memory for those of you who have me as a teacher, but muscle memory, square root of negative 1 is i. And then we've got the 27. And then we simplify here. We make our factor tree. So we've got 9 times 3 and 3 and 3. So we've got 3 times 3 times 3. And we need 2 of the same value. 2 of the same value to take out 1. So this becomes, the square root of negative 27 becomes 3i square root of 3. And now we can come up with our other two answers to this problem because it's going to be x equals negative 3 plus or minus 3i square root of 3 divided by 2. 
by the way, what this means, and, and all of the Algebra 2 teacher, teachers are fine with this answer that I just wrote down, but if you're very literal, which is, it says x cubed, we need three solutions, what this means is, this means negative 3 plus 3i square root of 3 over 2, and negative 3 minus 3i square root of 3 over 2. And don't forget, and I have to flip back to the page here, but when we went back here to this, our first answer was the x equals 3. So x equals 3, and there are our three solutions to this problem. Now I'm going to skip the next one for a minute and go to problem number um, 3 because it's the same idea here, and I'll try to make this video a little bit shorter and then I'll come up with the, the other two problems. But 8x cubed plus 27, what we want to do is we want to factor this. And again, it's going to be the soap, so it's going to be the, um, it's going to be the uh, little parentheses and the big parentheses. So little parentheses and the big parentheses. And then when we take the cube root of 8, we get 2. We take the cube root of x cubed, we get x. We take the cube root of 27, we get 3. And then it's going to be 8x cubed divided by 2x which is going to be 8 divided by 2 is 4, x cubed divided by x. We had 3x's, we took out 1, we get 2. 27 divided by 3, which is 9. And then we're going to take this term and this term, and we're going to multiply them together. 2x times 3, 2 times 3 is 6x. And then we put our signs in. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. And now that we've done that, we've factored first, remember it's set equal to zero, then we're going to take 2x plus 3 and set it equal to zero, and 4x squared minus 6x plus 9 and set it equal to zero. So we subtract 3 from both sides. We get 2x equals negative 3, and divide both sides by 2, so x equals negative 3 halves, that's one of our three solutions. Again, we need three solutions because we have an x cubed. This cubed right there, if I can get it to write, that 3 right there tells us that we're going to have three solutions. But now I'm going to add a page in to do uh, the next part, the 4x squared minus the 6x plus 9. And try to add the page in. There we go. And we get 4x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. Really sorry that you can't see the quadratic formula on this page. But a is 4. b is negative 6. And c is 9. And we're going to put that back in the quadratic formula. So x equals the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. I haven't done very well in my space here, but let's see how it goes. So this becomes x equals 6, plus or minus. Remember, you're going to type in what's underneath the square root into your calculator. And when you do, you get negative 108. And then 2 times 4 is 8. But the thing now is, we need to simplify negative 108. So 
simplify that square root the way your Algebra 2 teacher taught you how to do it. But the bottom line is, regardless of your teacher, you've got to deal with that square root of negative 1 first. And the square root of negative 1 is i. And now we can break down 108, which is 4 times 27. 4 is 2 times 2. 27 is 9 times 3. And then 3 times 3. So again, still I'm struggling with space. Let me write in again. The square root of negative 1 is i. But what we've got here to simplify this is we've got 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3, and we need 2 of the same to take out 1. 2 of the same to take out 1. 2 of the same to take out 1. And what we end up with is we end up with 2 times 3i square root of 3. So in other words, when we put this back in, we get x equals 6 plus or minus 6i radical 3. Down here, again, I took this 2 times 3 to get the 6. That's where that came from, 6i square root of 3. And then divided by 8. Now I'm going to add one more page in because... Um, if I remember correctly, we let you leave that answer in that format, but I want to just remind you, because a lot of you got this before. So again, we had ended up here with 6 plus or minus 6i square root of 3 divided by 8. Remember, because the 6 and the 6 and the 8 are all divisible by that number 2, we can simplify this square root one more time. So we take 6 divided by 2 and we get 3. 6i divided by 2, we get 3i. We don't touch the square root. And then 8 divided by 2 is 4. Lastly on this problem, we said three solutions. And I have to go back a couple pages here, but the first solution that we came up with was that negative 3 halves. And then our other two solutions are going to be 3 plus 3i square root of 3 over 4. And 3 minus 3i square root of 3 over 4. Again, all Algebra 2 teachers are fine with you writing your answer in that format. But if you're very literal... Miss Danhoff said three, and here's three. One, two, three.